1348 has to be one of the most dramatic years in European history. The outbreak of the First World War and the Second World War are up there, but when you take the longer view, 1348 was probably far more important. Through that year, the Black Death swept across the continent, carrying away somewhere in the region of 40% of the population in just two years. Take a moment to consider that. Wherever you are now, take a look around. I'm talking about every other person on your commuter train or in the cars passing by or the people walking up and down the street beside your house. They're suddenly gone. Now what I'm talking about is not the work of fiction. It's not fantasy, but something that happened. And people at the time left us accounts of what this was like. Listen to these words written in Mainsbury Abbey in Wiltshire in England in 1350 read by Aidan Crow from my new audio book on the Black Death. The cruel pestilence, hateful to all future ages, leaving not a city, a town, a village, or even, except rarely, a house, without killing most or all of the people there, so that all over England as a whole, a fifth of men, women, and children were carried to burial. Hateful to all future ages is certainly one way to put it. So deadly was this plague that it was treated in some places like an invading army. Here's another clip from my new audio book on the Black Death in Ireland. This one talks about reactions in a port in Italy. On December the 31st, 1347, a pitched battle had been fought in the harbour of Genoa, Italy, to try and prevent the plague coming ashore. Upon discovering that the crew members of an approaching vessel were infected with the disease, The Genoese attacked the ship with burning arrows and siege engines, successfully forcing the vessel from the harbour. Now, desperate as these times were, people did survive. You and I are living testimony to that. You wouldn't be here if your ancestors weren't one of the lucky ones. But they found themselves in a strange, bewildering world as society buckled and strained in the aftermath of the plague. Revolts broke out and people lost faith in their religion. While the plague transformed the entire continent, the story of the Black Death in Ireland is often overlooked, however. Yet, in what is a captivating tale, the Black Death arguably had its greatest impact in Ireland. When the tide of death eventually receded, the island was changed forever. About seven years ago, I wrote a book on the Black Death in Ireland, but over the last few months, I've been working on a new revised audio edition, which I've just released. If you've heard enough at this point and you want to get straight into it, there's links in the notes below on how you can get the book. But I would like to share a little bit more about the story told in that book over the rest of this episode. Because the story it tells is not just a history of the plague per se, but it's the story of how seven people, five women and two men from that time, found their lives upended in a gripping history laced with warfare, sieges, battles and revolts. The 14th century, when all this took place, was a fascinating time. It can almost seem fictional from the 21st century. There's 10 chapters in the audiobook which follow, as I mentioned, the lives of seven people who lived through these incredible times. But the titles of the first three alone give you some sense of what Ireland was like at the time. The book, for example, opens with a chapter called The Bishop and the Witch which is followed by The Hunted Assassin and then chapter 3 is called A Countess on the Frontier. They reveal what Ireland was like before the plague, a kingdom upended by political chaos and invasions. The fourth chapter, The Grey Friar and the Black Death, deals what it was like to live through the Great Plague and it tells this story from the perspective of John Clinn, who wrote the most famous account of the outbreak in Ireland. While I'll explain more about the book in a minute, I just want to explain how exactly you can get it right now. So it's divided into 10 chapters, basically 10 separate podcasts, and the overall runtime is about three hours. While I narrate the audio, voice actor Aidan Crow reads quotes from the time, like the one you heard at the start of the show, Kate Dunley did the sound, and Keith Hines provided the amazing artwork. Now to make the download really easy for you, I have two options. So you can buy the audiobook as a standalone purchase in a once-off payment 
or you can become a supporter and get it as part of a larger package of other exclusive Irish history content. Just let me explain that to you. So if you just want the audiobook, The Black Death in Ireland, you can go right now to the link for Acast Plus in the show notes below where you can buy it as a once-off purchase. Now don't worry, you aren't going to be charged a recurring payment. It is, as I say, a once-off payment of €5.99 plus taxes. Obviously, they vary a little bit depending on where you live. That's the only payment, though. And after that, you get three hours of great content on your phone. As I say, the link for that is in the show notes below. Now, the other way to get the book is to become a supporter of the show. For your monthly payment, you get the Black Death in Ireland audiobook, the entire back catalogue of exclusive shows for supporters, and my upcoming Civil War series with Dr. Brian Hanley. Now, if you're already a supporter of the show, you'll have access to this, so you don't need to worry about it. But if you've been thinking of becoming a supporter of the Irish History Podcast, this is a great time to come on board. You're going to get lots of bonus content in the next few months. Just go to patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. So to summarise there, you have two options, become a supporter and get the book that way, or if that's not for you, you can buy it as a once-off audio for just $5.99. Now while the book is pure escapism to an entirely different world, I can't deny my decision to edit the original 2016 book was influenced by events around us over the last couple of years, and strangely enough, comments at the Venice Film Festival this year. This is a preview of the introduction where I think I explain it well. Introduction In March 2020, there was a surge in interest in the Black Death as people across the globe tried to grapple with the outbreak of COVID-19. This was understandable in the absence of lived experience and memory of pandemics. The Great Plague of the 14th century is pretty much the yardstick by which people measure such events. However, having written a book on the Black Death back in 2015, I initially at least considered the comparisons a little on the sensational side. Difficult as our experience of COVID-19 has been, direct comparisons with the Black Death are a stretch. While life in Ireland in 2020 is far removed from that of the late Middle Ages, the diseases themselves are also, thankfully, very different. The death rate among those infected with COVID-19 is just over 3%, while the Black Death killed an estimated 40% of the entire European population in about 12 to 18 months in the mid-14th century. However, all that said, as the pandemic dragged on and that crisis became bound up in the growing numbers of major problems we face in the world today, the comparisons with the 14th century seemed a little more valid. Now, oddly, it was actually a Hollywood actor that brought the echoes from the 14th century into focus for me. In July 2022, at the Venice Film Festival, the actor, Timothy Chalamet, reflected on current events and said, I think it's tough to be alive now. I think societal collapse is in the air. It smells like it. Sensational as his words were, it was the reaction to them that was most interesting for me. His prediction of a societal collapse didn't raise eyebrows, but in a sign of the times, Chalamet's words seemed to resonate with many. There's no question history is accelerating at an extraordinary rate in the past few years, and few would argue it's heading in a positive direction. It's not solely the COVID-19 pandemic, but famine in East Africa, the first war in Europe since the 1990s, political upheaval across the West, not to mention the devastating impacts of climate change, Europe registered a 16% spike in death rates in July 2022 due to the intense heat waves which broke all records. It was in this context that late last summer I reread that book I had written on the Black Death about seven years ago in what was a considerably different world. I was surprised how my understanding of the Black Death had changed, even if the pandemic we had experienced was far less severe. Certain reactions to crisis appear timeless conspiratorial reactions to problems, emigration, social distancing, profiting from catastrophe are not new. People reacted remarkably similarly in the 14th century. This provoked me to edit and ultimately re-record that book on the Black Death. It's not a commentary on the times we live in, nor is it supposed to be allegorical or predictive of what lies ahead. The future is by definition unwritten and unknowable. 
This book begins in 1315 and ends around 1390. However, it certainly, like all history does to one extent or another, provides context to the present. In the following audio, you will hear the story of what remains the largely unknown crisis of the 14th century, which was centred around the Black Death of 1348. While the Great Mortality, as it was known at the time, is often presented as a crisis that happened in a vacuum, this was quite the opposite. When we look at the decades on either side of that outbreak, we find a familiar pattern to our experiences today. The story of that pandemic can only be understood in the context of several other crises that were already taking a severe toll on society. The book, therefore, follows the lives of two men and five women who lived in the Norman colony of Ireland in the mid-14th century. These were people struggling to deal with the legacy of the great European famine of the 1310s, the dramatic social upheaval that followed, not to mention the growing conflict between the Norman colonists and the native Gaelic Irish. While the wars, assassinations and struggles recounted in the following chapters may seem removed from the story of the Black Death, they are intrinsic to understanding its impact. Indeed, I would go as far as saying that the Black Death, like all diseases, doesn't really have a history. It does, however, have a history of interaction with humanity. This helps us understand its devastating impact and profound legacy. Nevertheless, while our experience of pandemics and crises may provide us with new insights into this era, L.P. Hartley's overused aphorism about the past being a foreign country where things are done differently remains the case. A tolerance for extreme violence, belief in the supernatural, not to mention witch burnings, pitched battles, sieges and assassinations, populate a wide gulf that exists between the 14th century and the present. Yet at times, you will, I think, find loud echoes of the crisis they experienced and their reactions to it, and some of the dilemmas we face today. If you like the sound of this and you want to submerge yourself into a very different world, get your copy of The Black Death in Ireland today. You can get it whatever way suits you best, either as a standalone three-hour feature or by becoming a supporter of the Irish History Podcast at patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. There's links to all this in the show notes below. Until next time, Sloan. Sloan.